what is the best ITX motherboard for AMD platform? Well, this guy over here probably is the one. Wanna know why? Well, let's find out. Licensing Windows is cheap and easy with whokeys.com and if you use the code TN20, you get an extra discount. Complete the purchase, copy the key, and paste it to the activation settings. And you're all done! Also check out their Microsoft Office 19 license and use the same code TN20 for the extra discount. Check out whokeys.com in the video description below. So this is the ROG Strix X670EI Gaming Wi-Fi. And firstly, let's take a look what's inside the box. Okay, we have our tiny motherboards. Strix Hive FPS2 card. So we'll take this one out. There's a tiny little box. ROG Strix Hive. I don't know why that is in the static bag. Doesn't need to be. There it is. Whoa, and a lot of accessories. So Wi Fi and Bluetooth antenna. Some M.2 standoff stickers that go underneath the M.2 if you've only got single sided M.2. Cable for the ROG Strix Hive. Okay, so this is the front panel connector extension. M.2 heatsink. Zip ties. SATA cables. The quick M.2 latch. We have a keychain, ROG keychain. This is the USB 2.0. Oh, split header. So if you need more than two, then you get some more and some information and other bits in there. Some stickers and all sorts. So let's take a look at the motherboard. Firstly, underneath, there's nothing on the backside here. Just a big AMD socket backplate. ROG Strix in here. Nothing else that you can see. No M.2 slots. There is a bit of cooling actually underneath here. We can see there's a thermal pad onto these back chokes there for the power delivery so they're cooling this with this back panel there as well making it a little bit better cooling now one thing that i'm noticing about this motherboard straight away is that there is no vrms on the top there i mean there is these three here not sure if they're chokes or capacitors whatever these are the rest of them are just hidden underneath there on the left side here usually on the set 790i we had some here as well so we had a heat sink that went on the top as well but here probably maybe because of the amd mounting mechanism and these clips here they couldn't put another heatsink on the top there now let's take a look at the headers on the motherboard on the top left here we have the eight pin cpu power header or eps connector we've got three pwm fan headers there that have been nicely covered with with a little rubber cover that doesn't want to come off so easy there we go you can see them there so from the left side, we have a CPU fan header, we have AIO pump header, and then we have a chassis fan. So three of them all together. The AIO pump in the middle always runs 100% speed. The ones on the left and right can be adjusted in BIOS or on software. We have one 5 volt ARGB header, and then one 12 volt ARGB header. 24 pin ATX power, front panel USB Type-C, which is only 10 gigabits in speed, not USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 slot. Then we have these two random USB-C ports and this is where this hub cup goes in. As you can see, the female connectors for these USB-Cs are on this and then the males are there. So basically this just slides, I'll put it on the side so you can see. So this just slides into there like that. And now you've got even more headers on the actual motherboard. So this is like a PCB extension and you've got some more headers on this tiny little guy there. We'll talk about that in a minute. Then we've got front panel type A header. This one here, this is USB 3.2 Gen 1 port, which is five gigabits in speed. These two headers here, one of them is a power button, the other one a temperature sensor. Now there is one more actual port or header, is this one down there, because that's like a for a ribbon cable and I have no idea what that one is for. There is an M.2 fan and then a chipset fan in here as well. The chipset fan header is actually there. It's not normal PWM header but if you look at it on the side you can see that there's a fan in there that blows down so it takes air from here and then blows down onto it and then out from the back over here and then the m.2 fan takes air in from here and then blows it this way from down there 
Now, this is the AM5 CPU socket, and this supports Ryzen 7000 out of the box, but also 8000 and 9000 that are coming out in a minute. Now, you might be going with the Ryzen 9000 CPU, and maybe there's the X870E motherboards then out, but this motherboard will support the Ryzen 9000 as well as the Ryzen 7000, so there's full support there, and probably the gen after as well. Here we have two DDR5 DIMM slots. On the paper, it says that it supports up to 64, 400 mega transfers per second dim uh, speed but I think it can actually go faster than that. I don't think you should be able to get it 64, depending on your CPU's IMC, but you should be getting faster as well, especially if you update the BIOS, which I highly recommend you to do. It should also support 48 gigabytes DIMMs, so up to 96 gigabytes right now, this supported, but in the future, probably up to 120 gigabytes, which is quite insane in small form factor like that. Now, before we talk about the PCI expansion slots, let's take away some of these heat sinks in here so this is a big tower of a heatsink that we have here so this was just two screws and then we've got the m.2 as you can see over here it supports lower ones as well so this is 2240 probably 2250 and then 2280 or 6080 so this is the 81 i don't think it supports the 110 millimeter m.2s and we've got a heatsink on the top only the bottom one is kind of just a standoff in there but the other heatsink or this bottom one is actually heatsink for the m.2 on the bottom so in order to go to the bottom of the m.2 we have to undo these screws here as well these screws are off oh and now this screw on this side as well and now this whole bit comes off now this is basically a big heatsink as you can see there is little chipset kind of on this PCB there and that PCB connects onto there so this is like a little ex extension PCB that goes onto directly onto this motherboard slot there and the motherboard slot over here is PCA Gen 4 X4 slot so the top slot here is actually a PCA Gen 4 that came off so this is where the PCA Gen 4 is cooled with the top little heatsink that we have on the side there and then underneath here, there is another heatsink, and as well as cooling this little chipset extension or whatever, this also cools the M.2 that goes underneath here. Now, this over here is PCA Gen 5 X4 slot, and this is directly connected to the CPU. Now, we could take this one off as well to take a look how this works. These are very skinny screws. When we do that, I believe we can take it off over there so as you can see we've got this little connector that connects directly onto the motherboard and this is PCA Gen 5 that goes onto there and this is the tiny little converter that makes it into a PCA Gen 5 basically it's a very clever way of elevating and moving the M.2 connectors around because we don't have PCB space in here we don't have space to have another M.2 or something like that so we can put it in there now underneath there is an actual x670e chipset and this is the cooler in there and you can see this green bit over there so that's the actual chipset and then the other because x670e actually has dual chipsets and then the other chipset is actually here on this heatsink which we plug into there and then that is the PCA Gen 4. This slot in here is the PCA Gen 5 X16 slot full size and it goes directly to the CPU. So this board actually has only one M.2 expansion slot that connects to the chipset and that's the top M.2 slot. And it does have an active fan on this side as you can see and that fan will blow this way and then through these two M.2 heatsinks and hopefully cool them down very, very nicely. There is a CMOS battery attached here as well onto there. But I want to see underneath this heatsink as well. So this is just a little plate here, little rubbery kind of thing on the side there. And then we have another tiny little fan. As you can see, it takes air intake from the top through this panel. As you can see, this ROG logo is actually a see-through or the air can go through there and then it sucks it in blows it down towards this side and then out from that side uh, the cool thing is if you don't want to take the top heatsink off as you can see there's a hole in here so you can put your screwdriver through and screw 
this whole heatsink off and only install the M.2 that goes underneath. So you don't have to necessarily take all of them off if you only want the M.2 that goes onto the CPU. Now let's take a look at this tiny little expander PCB that goes onto the side over there. So here we have two USB 2.0 headers, as you can see there, and a front panel connector that's here. If you remember, there was no front panel on the motherboard, which kind of expands the motherboard. You can split the USB 2.0 into two with that included cable here as well. So then you'll have three all together. Then on the side of the board, we have one clear CMOS headers in here. These two connect them and it clears your CMOS. CPU overvolt kind of protection overclocking thing. There's just this little jumper. You can put it on left or right or three headers. Honestly, for most people, this is a useless feature really. Two SATA ports and then this little switch switches the PCI expansion slot in there between Gen 4 and Gen 3. So if you got it in selector one or in the middle, it'll go to PCI Gen 4. And then on the bottom, we have PCI Gen 3. But if you leave it on auto, it's going to PCI Gen 5. Honestly, from, I don't see a reason why you'd need that. Now, you might have noticed that there hasn't been any front panel audio connectors, and that's absolutely correct. And if we see the IO of this motherboard, this story keeps continuing. So we have one HDMI out from the iGPU of the CPU. Then all of these red USB type A ports are 10 gigabits in speed. So we've got five all together, which is pretty fast. Then we have USB 2.0 ports, as you can see three here, and then two USB 4 ports that are type C connectors. These also support display pass through. So if you need video output through USB C, they can support that as well. And here you've got your Wi Fi and Bluetooth antennas. Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2 or 3. Now, this is not all because as you can see, this red USB type A port here has this little connector cable in there. Now, you've got this special Strix Hive cable. And basically, this is a very special cable that connects you to that Hive. You put the type A on the back in here. And bear in mind, do that before you do your first boot because that will really, really help you. And from the side of the motherboard, this will slot into the back in here. And now suddenly your motherboard IO is extended as well through this cool little hive. So what we have here is a headphone and mic combo jack and a mic in or optical out port, which we have here. This is very interesting and I'd love to see how the optical out works because I really haven't seen this before. Then we've got the ROG logo on one side and then on the other side we have one 10 gigabits USB-C port as well. So you can get an extra one on the table and USB 2.0 port. But this one supports BIOS flashback. So you can update the BIOS without CPU and RAM as long as your PSU is installed there. Put the PSU in, put your BIOS into there, press this button here, bam, and you're actually gonna to start to update your BIOS, which is absolutely fascinating. Then this hive has this big knob, which is obviously your volume, and when you press it down, that is mute or unmute your volume. This flex key on the left side is actually a system reset button. So let's say it hangs or something like that, you can just press this and it's reset, because often on SFX cases, you only have the power button, you don't have a reset button, but suddenly now you have the reset button as well. This button in the middle here is an interesting one. This will switch your PBO on or off. So with one button here, boom, it's kind of like a switch on or off, like up or down. You can switch your BBO on or off and switch it very fast. And one of my favorite features are these four LEDs in the front here. If you've used Asus motherboards before, you know that when you're getting a post, there is four LEDs on usually the ATXIs and MATX and EATX motherboards, which will show you where and what we're testing. The CPU one is red, the RAM one is orange or amber, then we have VGA, which is white, and then finally post, which is green. So now when we posting on the, the PC, I can easily see what's happening. Are we stuck on RAM? Are we stuck on CPU? Are we stuck on VGA? And you'll know because without it, very often there's no way to know like what, where our post is actually stuck. So I'm liking that feature a lot. Now this motherboard also has some AI features, which uh, you know are questionable. Firstly, we've got AI cooling, which is basically just an algorithm that adjusts the cooling, you know, speed of the BWM 
depending whether or how fast and how much power you're pulling from the CPU. Then we've got AI two-way noise cancelling, which you can experience through these audio ports there. Again, an algorithm to just remove the noise. And then there's AI networking as well, which is basically just some software that dedicates networking speeds to whatever you want kind of thing. Now, one more thing to mention is the AEMP profiles for the RAMs, which is basically ASUS optimized memory profiles or something like that. So basically the Expo that your RAM kit comes with, ASUS has already tested them in, you know, their factory and also offers their way of like their advanced or enhanced profile, perhaps a little bit tighter timings or a little bit faster RAM, sometimes even faster speed. So you can get even more out of your RAM kit when having this motherboard, which is pretty cool actually. All in all, this features a lot of power and features. IO is incredible, a lot of connectivity. We've got two M.2 slots, one of them Gen 5, and there's no switching or anything. You're not gonna lose anything when using this motherboard. It's tiny, it offers a lot of power and features. So if you're looking for a high-end motherboard for your AMD Ryzen 7000 onward CPUs, then this one looks like is one of the ones to get. If you want to pick this motherboard out, it's in the description below, as well as our build guides if you want to build yourself the best bang for buck, create a PC. If you want to reach out, I'll always get back to my Minac messages, so check it out in the description below as well, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.